Hey, good morning. Um, today's blog post is going to be regarding buyer behavior. Over the weekend, I got a, uh, a an email or text message from one of my clients selling a store, and it turns out that a buyer had walked into their store on Friday afternoon, uh, unbeknownst to me and unbeknownst to their own broker, and began to have a discussion with the seller with regard to um, the business purchase and the nuances of the business. Um, I found out about this Sunday when the seller sent me an email saying, hey, there'll be an offer forthcoming from um, this person and, and their broker should be contacting you. Um, I happen to have known this broker in question for about eight years and this was totally outside the norm. So I reached out to him and it turns out he knew nothing about it and the buyer had gone around his back and done this. Um, you know, the buyer probably thought that um, it was the best thing for them to do it and that they didn't need the broker's services. Um, you can tell by the look on my face I'm not all that excited about this particular person and, and here's why. Um, one, you know, this person signed a non-disclosure document, which is a legal document um, that, long and short of it, ties the, the individual to their broker as procuring cause for the transaction, but also usually lays out in, the, in such documents um, quite a few legal processes and um, ramifications should they uh, break the protocols laid out in the NDA. Um, I take that document very seriously and think people need to follow it and quite often when someone doesn't I will you know, come to bear against them for not performing what they said they would do, which seems pretty common sense. Um, this buyer seems to think or seemed to think that it was in their best interest to do so and I tend to not get excited about people like this because, quite frankly, after eight years, um, when someone violates their NDA, they never finish a transaction anyways. Um, you know, would you trust someone to do what's laid out in the negotiation um, at arm's length, um, which requires some give and take, if the very first action they did was violate a, a legal document? Um, so. You know, what tends to happen is sellers tend to get a little skittish and, this, and these buyers who do this tend to um, be very unreasonable and not act um, in, in good faith. So um, a word to the wise with regard to buyers um, not working with their brokers. If you're not happy with your broker, then find one who you are comfortable with, but follow their lead and let them do their job. Um, this action has already created a negative perception on my part as an advisor to a seller and uh, I'm not going to be an advocate for someone um, or for terms that are that are presented um, because I've already had an experience whereby the individual has violated a protocol. So um, keep that in mind when you're acting as a buyer. Um, follow the rules that are laid out and the processes that are laid out. They're tried, they're true, and then they work. If you violate them um, and everybody else's expectation is that these are the way things are going to be done or the ways things are going to be done, um, you set yourself on a, on, a, on a bad footing for the start of negotiations. Um, now, as it comes to the point of buying businesses in Florida when you're acting as a buyer, um, you know, in Florida, there's some subtle nuances. We have a, a trade association known as the BBF, and they, 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 they have a multiple listing service. In some countries, um, say for England, where probably 50% of our practice is, uh, is if, with buyers is folks coming in from the UK, um, folks like myself do not co-broker. Uh, in Florida, it, it is a ready, willing, and able practice. Um, and I would tell you that anybody who doesn't probably doesn't do a lot of transactions. Uh, we have an association called the Business Brokers of Florida. We monitor and operate a multiple listing service um, that you can reach from my site and a variety of other sites. Um, if you Google Business Brokers of Florida, you're going to see that multiple listing service. Um, but there is a document, you know, after you present an NDA and you sign it and you get it back to the broker, you're going to immediately get back what's known as a BLI or Business Listing Information Sheet. Uh, on that sheet will be a a simple uh, 508 character description of the business which is pretty limited um, and there should be what's known as recasted financial statements which will lay out revenues, cost of goods, expenses, the profit if the business even shows one um, which shouldn't alarm people. Uh, it'll show the owner's salary if the owner draws one. Um, believe it or not there are businesses that don't draw salaries and it's perfectly legitimate. 
interest depreciation and uh, and uh, other addbacks are, are put in there and we'll talk about what those things are in detail later but what that is is a simple restatement of cash flows um, as a buyer you will drive yourself nuts and um, you know when I think at one point I've talked about that 90% of buyers never buy anything um, you will drive yourself nuts if you try and do due diligence off of a BLI sheet um, you should discuss with your broker and look at comparable listings and, and, and sold statistics to see if the numbers fall in line. Conduct a, a site visit and make an offer based upon a BLI or whatever financials they offer you. Um, they may not give you all the financials um, and that sometimes shocks buyers. Um, but I would ask you if you were a buyer and you were um, selling your own business um, and you had private tax information in there, would you hand it out? to just tie any Tom, Dick, and Harry knowing that 90% of them will never do anything and knowing that there are people who violate non-disclosure documents every day. So, um, you know, if you're shocked that sellers aren't just opening up their books and records to you sight unseen, um, you know, be aware that's the reason why because some of your compatriots as buyers don't play by the rules. Um, so, once you get that BLI and you do your NDA and you make your offer, the, the, the seller is either going to match your offer or not match your offer or accept it. Um, and then you'll go into your due diligence period. Your due diligence period is when you're going to get to see everything. I would tell you that, in my opinion, looking at a tax return or a P&L um, prior to due diligence really means little to nothing um, since you know the true proof out of the revenues or some other items like bank statements and and general ledgers and and, and invoices from third parties um, I've seen people falsify tax returns I've seen p ls that are you know fictional that are accrual basis that that you know may not reflect this, the current standing of the business so you know true due diligence and true assessment has to happen at a different stage and if you're not comfortable with getting to that stage uh, without any risk, then I kind of question your, 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 your intent of buying a business. Um, so, you know, some tips. Uh, first, you know, ignore the purchase price on, on business listing sheets. Um, statistically speaking, uh, about, mm, there's about a, you know, if businesses sell at a multiple, and, you know, if the average business in Florida sells at about a 1.8 to a 2 multiple, they listed about a 3 to 3.5 multiple uh, to cash flow. So generally businesses are listed overpriced, and that's a broker issue, um, lacking the guts and the chutzpah to kind of train sellers properly. Um, if the business doesn't show owner financing, don't sweat it. It should, and it will. 90% of businesses that sell, sell with some element of owner financing, whether the seller wants it or not. So understand that. Um, and then finally, you know, don't be scared off by owner to prove or, you know, annualized statements. Um, small business owners don't, you know, they're, they're chief bottle washer, you know, sales guy, operations guy, and, and sometimes human resources. They do everything. Frankly, they operate. They don't run P&Ls on a monthly basis for the most part, and they don't run uh, QuickBooks. And every buyer I've ever met is shocked by this, and they all say it'll all be different uh, when they're running a business. But... Um, come to find out when you run your own business, you find out that you don't need a P&L or a balance sheet on a daily basis. Frankly, um, you never look at them uh, in, in, my, in my experience. So um, first tip, ignore the purchase price. Second tip, um, you know, always assume there's some element of owner financing. And, and the third tip is follow the process that's laid out. If you don't, you send signals to all the parties involved um, legal um, signals and performance signals, which actually hurts you in the end game negotiation. So, with that, I'd actually to ask you to go back to www.businessesforsaleorlando.com or www.tworld.com for more on how buyers should act.